Ao Oni, the blue demon. He sure is. He's coming for you, oh god! After I played Yuma Nikki back in the 2000s, I was getting the itch to play another RPG horror game. One that would scare the pants off of me. So, I chose this guy. Ao Oni is an RPG survival horror puzzle game developed by No Props and released on ModDB in 2008. Ao Oni is a game where four teenagers, Hiroshi, Takoro, Mika, and Takashi, decide to check out a supposedly haunted mansion to see what's been going on. A regular old Scooby-Doo type situation over here, and there's just as many doors. When Hiroshi starts exploring the mansion, his friends disappear all of a sudden. As he looks for them, he realizes that he's locked in the mansion, and he is being hunted by the titular Ao Oni. That's Blue Demon if you don't speak weeb. The rest of the game consists of solving puzzles, running away from the Oni, opening doors, running away from the Oni, finding your friends, running away from the Oni, watching your friends die and turn into the Oni, running away from your friends until eventually you find the key that leads to your escape only to be shown that another group of people end up in the mansion, starting the cycle anew. Ooh. This game has the most basic of basic horror premises. Teenagers go in-house, monster in-house chases, kills all but one protagonist, cycle repeats. It's a pretty typical slasher movie. Not only that, but the monster looks like this. This fucking Obunga looking ass. Like, like, look at this, look at this. With the most basic, unoriginal premise and creature that looks like it's going to be a deep-fried internet meme next year, how did this game become the worldwide critically acclaimed game it became? Going into this game for this video, I really didn't expect this game to age well. I remembered the goofy face, the very quiet, stoic nature of the game, and just expected, oh, I was scared of this game when I was 12. There's no way the scares will get me now, as a jaded 27-year-old in 2023. I'm shocked to say that no, I was completely wrong. This game isn't without its goofiness, but honestly, I think it knows it looks goofy but doesn't care. There's one point in the game where you walk into a room called the Oni Room. This room shows all of the different types of Onis this mansion has, and the buff one is literally just lifting invisible weights. They're taking the piss. It's really crazy though just how effective the scares are in this game. Every time this little cutie over here comes out to chase you, it's always when you absolutely least expect it. For example, there's this room towards the beginning of the game where I'm just searching for items. I see a closet that I may be able to open, begin to walk towards it, the Oni opens up the opposite closet, and chase time. It's honestly genius how simple, yet effective its scare tactic is. It never waits for a moment where the monster popping out would be expected. The Oni doesn't pop out when I interact with a certain object in a room, it doesn't pop out when you reach any meaningful checkpoint, instead the game just waits for you to walk into the room, take a few steps just enough for you to deem the room safe, and start doing what you were doing, and then chooses to pop the Oni out. The timing is perfect. It happens on the offbeat and hits that scare chord just hard enough to make me piss my pants, but make sure nothing else comes out. How courteous. There's another scare I want to highlight that I don't really want to say scared me, because the twist was predictable as hell, but for a 2008 game, this was creative as hell. At the very, very, very end of the game, you are in the mansion's basement, where you must collect three blue pieces to place in a picture frame at the end in order to unlock the final door. Along the way, you pick up your friend Takuro, which is weird, because just moments before, we saw him getting attacked by the Oni. Huh. Anyway, you have him with you for a while, collecting the three pieces with you and helping out by... being in your party menu when you go to save your progress. Thanks for the moral support, buddy. You finally collect all of the blue pieces and are ready to place them within the picture frame. You press the menu button to go into your inventory and what? Takuro, in your party menu, is now an Oni. When you leave the menu, it initiates a chase scene. It was super predictable at this point that Takuro was actually an Oni, but god damn if that isn't a creative way to essentially initiate the final boss fight of the game. 
I love these fourth wall breaking scares in horror games like this, and it's super interesting to see even when indie horror was in its infant stages that games like this one were trying to push the envelope. That's usually where I would end the video, but I want to take a second to really talk about how crazy the legacy of this game is. When it comes to indie horror franchises that got so famous that it broke out into so many other mediums like books and movies, the one you would probably name is Five Nights at Freddy's. Five Nights at Freddy's started out as an indie horror series created by one man, Scott Cawthon, in 2014. In 2023, Five Nights at Freddy's is now 14, soon to be 15 games, 23 books, and an upcoming movie. Honestly, for an indie game franchise to explode like this is mind-blowing. Well, Ao Oni did it years before Five Nights at Freddy's did. Ao Oni has five novels that came out over the span of 2013 to 2017, six junior novels, a live-action movie in 2014, an anime series in 2016, and an anime movie in 2017. For such a simple indie horror game, that's insane. So why does Five Nights at Freddy's get all of the notoriety for being the indie game that succeeded, but Ao Oni barely gets any press? I believe there are two contributing factors to this. The first one being that there was a major delay between when the game was popular and when all of the supplementary media came out. Ao Oni got popular around the time it came out, around 2008 to around 2010. All of the other media that exists came out the earliest in 2013 three whole years later. By that time, the world was focusing on Slender as being the next big horror game. Ao Oni was just a footnote in people's minds at this point. Five Nights at Freddy's, on the other hand, has been consistently coming out with content every year since the series' inception, keeping itself relevant. The second factor that I believe contributed to this is the fact that even though Ao Oni was popular worldwide at one point, it was definitely more popular in Japan. The game first saw its rise in popularity on Nico Nico Doga, a website that is essentially just Japanese YouTube. From there, it blew up in Japan, which is probably why most of the media that came out centered around this franchise came out exclusively in Japan. Ao Oni definitely deserves a seat when it comes to the most influential indie horror games to ever exist. Through its keen sense of scare timing, interesting art style, tongue-in-cheek nature, and interesting legacy, maybe one day we'll explore the rest of the franchise. If you want me to go over the novel series or even the anime, tell me in the comments below and I'll dance monkey dance. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell to turn on notifications. Next week, we will be talking about yet another indie horror classic, Eve. If you really want to help out the channel, make sure you hit that join button to become a channel member to get early access to videos, exclusive emojis, and a shout out like I'm going to give to Andrew Retro Games. We also have merch in the description below where you can buy our shirts, stickers, and mugs. Every cent helps us bring better and better content to you. With that, I bid you, my well-esteemed ghouls, adieu.